Okay. Yeah, I think the time is up. Let's just yeah. start. Yeah, we waited enough and uh, let's get it started. So, um, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar today. And the focus is uh, smart cities. Uh, my name is Luis. I'm the business development manager for Europe. And also together with my colleague, Jeremy, uh, who is the BDM for Dark Region. Hello, everyone. So nice to meet you again. Yeah. So today, I think we're going to present a uh, wonderful presentation regarding smart cities. Yeah, maybe please, you can move on for the next part. OK, um, so here you can see here are the main contents we're going to cover today. But really, the focus will be the applications mm -hmm. of smart city and also the success stories. And um, for this concept of smart city, we've heard it for a long time. So Jeremy, let me ask you, um, how do you define smart city? Well, I think the concept is very hard for me to define, but I believe it is that the technology that can improve the citizens' life in cities and uh, can make our life become more convenient, more efficient, and yeah, better ways of life. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there are many, I think there are many ways to define yeah, yeah. a smart city. Um, and myself, um, you know, I took the easy way. I sought help for uh, the latest technology, which is <laughs> chat GPT. Yeah. So here I have a more detailed answer, a more detailed de definition of smart city. Um, uh, my understanding that smart city is a way to uh, build everything in, on the concept of Internet of Things. So um, there are many devices, different kinds of sensors can be connected. Um, and also uh, the data with the more accurate data from the sensors, uh, we can make uh, better decisions uh, on the data analytics. Smart city projects uh, often they cover transportation, energy use, waste management, and public safety. So um, to me, smart city is a more of approach where, where we are trying to um, have everything and uh, trying to have everything everywhere within the city to have them connected. Yeah, it's so very interesting topic and to which kind of person can get benefit from the smart city. Can you just explain it's more? I yes. Yeah. So I think there are four main groups of people who can get benefits uh, from smart city projects. For business owners um, with the more accurate data ca captured, I think they, they, it's easy for them to increase their economic opportunities and also to improve their efficiency and the productivity of business. And for us, like residents, uh, smart city projects will improve our quality of life and uh, to bring the uh, safety and the security standard to a higher level. Mm -hmm. um, for city officials and planners, uh, I think smart with the help of smart city projects, um, uh, they, they, this can really change the way of how they operate the city to make it more efficient and uh, to have uh, to improve the decision-making process and the resource management. And for governments, with the help of smart city projects, um, this will improve the public safety and the emergency responses. Yeah. And most in the past years, uh, according to our experience, uh, I think some common application for smart city would be um, EV charging, something like that, and light, smart street lighting, public transports, parking, traffic management, waste management, and uh, utility sector. Um, like I mentioned, the smart city is trying to connect everything uh, in the city, and every tiny pieces get connected. They will generate data, and the data is, I think, is fundamental of the um, decision-making process. And the, the more data we have, the more accurate data we have, we can make better decisions. I think that's the goal of uh, uh, smart city projects. Okay. 
So um, then let me just uh, go through some of these applications of smart city solutions where in-hand products were involved. I think the most common application in the past we had is um, for uh, parking lots. So in the past, uh, normally there will be a human employee to here uh, on site to manage day-to-day uh, -day business on the parking lots. Uh, but uh, nowadays, more and more parking lots, they became unattended. So there will be no human employees on site. That's it. Of course, this is to reduce operational costs. And in this uh, type of application, uh, normally we would install the uh, in-hand router at the entrance, where it will connect to a control PC uh, with a camera. And then uh, the camera will collect the car plate information and then uh, transmit the car plate information to uh, central management center. Also, the router will connect to a um, ticketing machine where you get the tickets, where you make payments. So the transaction data can be securely transmitted to the central cloud as well. And um, with this uh, statistical analysis, uh, based on the, those data, uh, the operational team, they can really improve the management's efficiency, as you can imagine. Okay, and nowadays, uh, in those developed regions, especially in the bigger cities, on the city roads, there are all kinds of uh, traffic monitoring uh, system everywhere. Um, I think that's a good thing, but for us, maybe we'll, uh, we need to drive more cautiously. Um, so for, tra for traffic management, um, not often the, the, our device will be connected to a special light camera. This camera will capture uh, photos and will record videos if this uh, it senses any traffic violations. Um, another advantage of, um, I say, the industrial router, I mean, it would be the size could be compact enough so it can easily fit into the overhead cabinets. We also developed a product for street lighting uh, and we deployed many of those street lighting projects, especially in uh, regions like Italy in, and in Spain. Um, our customers would connect to a street light controller by either using the Ethernet ports or serial ports, RS485 or RS232. And from remote sites, the operational team can adjust the brightness, can adjust the, 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 the timing of the lighting uh, according to the real um, weather or, um, uh, or season. This product is industrial grade, so it is uh, ruggedized enough for outdoor working conditions. Okay, um, smart recycling and waste sorting is a hot topic nowadays. So by connecting to on-site camera and another type of sensor, such as a dustbin, dustbin tag using RFID technique, the operational team, they can remotely monitor the status of the dustbin. So um, therefore the human workers, they can plan their um, dust or uh, waste collection routes more efficiently. And with the help of the on-site videos, uh, the real-time video image can be captured and sent to uh, central clouds and where the AI is enabled. So the system can automatically analyze the video and to try to detect if there's any potential hazards and to lower, lower risk of pollution, further pollution. So <clears throat> I think the uh, smart waste recycling is a really a trend in the, in the, in the future. Public transport is another important topic in the uh, uh, smart city projects. Um, so in the past, a bus stop is simply a bus stop. But nowadays, uh, you can see a lot more information in the bus stop. So our, our router can be a part of this solution where it helps to transmit real-time information uh, of a bus state of the, the bus status 
uh, and for stock information and some other type of local services. All this information can be displayed on the uh, screen on the, of the bus stop. And the passengers, uh, it's much easier for them to get real-time information. This is the application we call it, how we improve the resident's quality of life. Okay, here, let me present to you our products, IR300 series, IR302 and IR305. I think those are the top sellers of um, our portfolio. Um, of course, they are certified with uh, European certifications. They're ready. And um, it come with, come with uh, LTE network 4G, LTE uh, with options of Wi-Fi. You will have up to five Ethernet ports. This product is reliable because we have multiple link backups. Uh, dual SIM cards and virtual redundancy routing protocols. You will have options of uh, serial interface and I/O interface, and it is, it is highly secure. Uh, it will allow you to build VPN internals, so uh, the sensitive data uh, can be trans transmitted. Um, and I want also to point out that uh, for all our in-hand devices we will offer the device management platform, which is free for our customers. And it can help you to manage all the in-hand devices, such as you can um, up upgrade the firmware, you can change the configuration files, and also you can reboot them and see the status. So it's very convenient. Okay, on this page, you will see a detailed view of uh, the product, how it looks. Uh, on the left side is IR302 and IR305. And if you switch the screen, you can see my colleague, Jeremy, who is holding two of the devices. So yes, in this hand is the IR302, and this hand is IR305. So you can see the main difference that uh, their size is a little bit different, but another difference that one is with the two SN ports and other is with five SN ports. But they are all in compact size and can be suitable for, for a lot of application cases. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jenny, for this show demonstrating. If you have any questions, you can uh, type in the chat box or the QA session. Okay. Um, next, uh, we're going to talk about utility. So, utility, I think, is another important sector of smart city projects. And here is the secondary water supply system. Uh, I think there are, there, is a, there are a lot of uh, uh, facilities or uh, equipments in a water supply pump groups. Uh, I think they are necessary to be monitored. So if there's any failure or uh, abnormal activities, they can be detected in time. And the operational team, they can step in and perform preventive maintenance. Uh, if necessary. And as you can see on, on the uh, graph, um, with the help of in-hand switches, the industrial gateway, it can be connected to different kinds of sensors where we can monitor the water pressure, we can monitor the water quality and water flow rates. And also there are some other devices can be connected such as a, a camera. Um, with the the function of the gateway is not just to transmit data uh, transparently, but uh, uh, more importantly, it collects data. It can sort or pro process, uh, pre process this data and to have them in, uh, in a more structured way before sending to the cloud. Here is let me present to you the IG in gateway. Um, so this product, it also has the option of uh, LTE network. It supports multiple industrial protocols. They are compatible with the mainstream cloud platforms such as uh, AWS and uh, uh, Azure. Rich interfaces, serial, IO, ethernet, Wi-Fi, um, edge computing capabilities, and you can program uh, applications using Python language. And also you can run your uh, applications 
with the help of Docker container. Um, and to make things easier for our clients, the Inhan team have, has built in a application called Device Supervisor. This, device, this application will help you to collect data and um, it's easy three-step co configuration. The first is to add your device and choose protocol. The second is to configure variables and set alarms based on the uh, variable criteria. Third, you can easily connect the device to a third-party cloud uh, according to your own business. So you can see the data collected or uh, the, see the notification from your own dashboard. Okay, on this page, it is a detailed view of IG502 and IG902. You may think that uh, it looks quite similar on the, on the, on the screen, uh, but uh, Jeremy, please help demonstrate the real product. Yes, and so this in this uh, now this one is the IG502 and this one is, sorry. IG902. So you can see in the size actually for the IG902 um, is a little bit larger. And actually, the hardware is better. So the performance will be better. And also, the IG902 support Docker, so which is better than the IG502. So that's the difference for them. Yeah, but thank still, you. The size is very not so large, I think. Yeah, thank you for explaining. So um, to summarize, IG902. Bigger size, more powerful, mm -hmm. supports Docker, where IG502 does not support Docker. Yeah. Okay. And then um, for new inf infrastructures. So nowadays, there is an increasing number of uh, electrical vehicles. And of course, uh, there will be newly built EV charging stations all over the place. Um, for this kind of application, we do have a um, all-in-one solution ready, which we call it industrial PC in box. Uh, this device has rich interfaces, so it will be able to connect to different types of uh, devices, such as a display screen, uh, cameras, control units for charging, uh, card readers for payments, and some other sensors. It can really be the heart of the charge of the charging kiosks, um, and this device is also industrial grade, ruggedized enough for outdoor installations, and it has an open system for customized applications. So here are the features of Inbox. Um, Inbox seven hundred. You have submodels for five G and four G versions. It is quite powerful with hexa-core processor. Uh, you will have options for 5G and 4G network and uh, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It, it has uh, HDMI interface support up to 4K resolution. And uh, important, another important thing is this device uh, can let you to choose if you want an Android system or Linux. Uh, so, like I mentioned, it's a very open system. You can customize uh, many things, including the user interface. And on this page, you can see the detailed view of Inbox 710. Uh, and Jeremy is yep. holding uh, this device. So, you can see here are three zero ports. And here are the USB port, three USB ports. Well, let me closer. And one um, HDMI port, and also the Ethernet ports. So quite a lot of interfaces for different uh, end terminals connections. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the Inbox 774G version is powerful already, and we have a. Uh, even more powerful solution, which is what we call Inbox 720, 5G industrial computer. As you can see, um, the size is a little bit bigger than Inbox 710, and it has um, more uh, interface connections. Yeah, six USB ports, yeah. Okay. 
Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Next, I will hand over to Jeremy. So, who is going to show you some success stories of yeah. our uh, yeah. products? So, thank you, Luis, for the detailed introduction of the how different smart safety applications can be achieved by the IoT technologies. And next, I want to show our listeners more um, success stories in real case to see how our smart safety clients adapt our different IoT solutions to add value for their service. Um, so the first story I want to tell is a client in Spain named uh, Realtail. Uh, it's regarding the um, traffic management for the highways. So as you know, known to all in the, our city lives, the traffic is one of the most important topics that influence in both all our daily lives. <laughs> And uh, imagine the one situation in the morning, that peak time, everyone would drive to the office. Uh, so the traffic will be extremely in jam. But uh, during other times, the roads will be quite empty. So how to get to know the real time data of the traffic will be very uh, helpful for the people to make the schedule. And this is also one key requirement from our end client. And besides that, the end client want to get more real-time data about the stand, and stand, stand of the traffic. For example, whether um, the drivers are, are driving too fast, whether they are fast in the belts, or whether they are driving in violations, such as uh, uh, these things. So these core requirements all need the data to be firstly transmitted in very high speed. So then they come to us, we help to select uh, this IS Zero tool for them, and namely to connecting the um, traffic control and speed control devices uh, via SNR ports to our IR Zero to uh, signal routers. So the uh, camera captured uh, pictures can be um, transmitted to a uh, well, very fast 4G speed to a traffic monitoring center to help the engineers there to make the strategy for the whole traffic. And well, except for that, the end client will also require that uh, the data to be transmitted in various safety. And also uh, the products need to be suitable for the harsh environments and the very compact size, even for installation. So all this can be uh, met by, perfectly met by our IR302 uh, product. Um, well, this case might be very simple, um, but I want to say that smart city can be that simple uh, to be achieved by our, our uh, uh, rotor product. And in this case, I want to show you more uh, complete cases about the remote monitoring of secondary water supply from the Changsha Water Group, which is one of the largest water supply group in China. So in their old, tra so in their, uh, tra uh, old factory, um, there are tons of data generating during the process such as the water flow speed, the water quality, the water volume, and the status. And, and the people there can only um, collect it manually, so which means they need to spend a lot of manpower and resources, and this, which is very efficient. And, efficient. and so um, then the client come to us to ask for a solution, and the, in this case, we select IG902 for it, and uh, um, so uh, different uh, devices in the water uh, supply plant, uh, such as the POC, HMI, or industry meters, all, be, all can be collected via our IG902 through different protocols like the um, Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, ISO, and TCP. Yes, and uh, I lastly I want to mention that our IG902 uh, has very good edge computing ability, so that uh, they can firstly help the plant to um, process data primarily and edge, like they can it can filter some unnecessary data or process some data, then transmit it to Changsha Water Supply uh, private cloud via MQTT. Yeah. And in the third case, I want to explain uh, a little bit more about uh, emerging industry, namely smart EV charging. Um, so uh, we have one client uh, in Central Europe. It is a car manufacturing uh, company. Uh, they 
a plan to uh, apply this smart EV charging for the whole across the whole Europe. So due to confidential, I wouldn't mention its name, but uh, yeah, they do have such a larger plans to uh, develop the EV charging during the last uh, three or four years. Uh, as it low to all, I think that now the um, according to the uh, you um European, I think you know that after 2013 uh, five there will be no CO two car uh emitting car sales, and so uh, which means that the electric vehicle will become the mainstream very soon, and uh, correspondingly the recharging will be become very popular in later phase. So our client come to us and their key requirement is to monitor the status of the EV charging kiosks. So that, for example, um, they want to know which um, EV charging is occupied or vacancy, so they can inform the end users to um, and for them to charge uh, to change their charging behaviors. And besides that, so they, there are also a lot of the end terminals in the EV charger like the cut radar and the, the uh, display and the cameras and all this they want to collect it uh, to the management platform. And under this case, we select the inbox 710 for them. The inbox 710, as you can see, has very uh, abundant interfaces to collect different devices. And also one point is that it has um, uh, 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 Android, sorry, Android operation systems, which um, is also another reason for, uh, for the kind to, to choose this product. Okay, I want to mention one more point is that the kind requires a very high standard or, of EMSA level, um, around EMSC level five, uh, four, um, which we actually don't have the, the corresponding products in our uh, in previously. Um, so we redesigned our product to meet the customer's standard. So what I want to say is that if the client has a requirement, we will try our best to uh, meet the requirement. So in the end, I want to spend a little, uh, a little bit more time to explain about who we are actually for the newcomers, um, which are not familiar with us. So um, we, we were founded in 2001 as an uh, M2M um, IoT company. And after 20, 22 years development, we have never changed our focus and make a lot of achievements. So we have supplied our products to um, go bulky uh, clients like the GE, like the Schneider, like the Siemens, uh, ABB. And in 2019, we uh, our new factory construction was completed in Jashin to serve the global clients. And also we were public in 2020 in Shanghai Star Market. And here you can see our global coverage in Apex Center is Beijing and our um, uh, North America Center is in US. Uh, we also have office in Canada and uh, Germany. And now we have more than 400 employees, among which one third uh, from our D team. So a very strong technical team. And it, here, except for the previously Luis mentioned the products, actually we also serve a lot so a large range of products covering the whole four IoT layers. Um, but our main focus here is in the let work layer, and we also provide the web gateway, educate filters like these products. Yeah. And in the end, uh, a little more about quality. Yeah, uh, we have passed all the certifications, and also we provide a three year free one team for all our clients. I think that's all about our Q and A. If you have any questions, now it's time for. Uh, maybe what we to raise your question and we can answer it. Okay, I will stop you. Sorry, Mr. Kim. Okay, I forget one very critical thing that if you have any questions, you can write emails to Jared, me and Luis. Here is our email contact information. And if you have any questions, please write it in the chat box. Our engineers are online to support you. And uh, yeah. 
Okay, please, any questions, type in the chat box answers. And uh, <clears throat> we will send the slides to everyone who uh, attended. Don't worry. So thank you guys and uh, have a nice day. Yeah. Bye.